Digital cordless phone affects the heart. Are the results real or are they an artifact? In 2010, we published our research showing that radiation from a cordless phone at 2.4 gigahertz affects the heart. Our research was published with other studies dealing with the non-thermal effects of non-ionizing radiation as an ISIMS monograph. In this study, we state, this is the first study that documents immediate and dramatic changes in both heart rate and heart rate variability associated with microwave exposure at levels well below federal guidelines in Canada and in the United States. We asked a simple question. Does the radiation from a cordless phone affect the heart? We did this study because some people complain of heart palpitations when they are exposed to radio frequency radiation. Radiation was generated by the base of a cordless phone that continuously emits radio frequencies when it is plugged into a live electrical outlet. The phone we used generated a pulsed 2.4 gigahertz signal, which is the same frequency used in Wi-Fi. Exposures at the heart were less than 0.2% of federal guidelines in both Canada and the United States, and each exposure lasted for three minutes. This was a double-blind, sham-controlled, peer-reviewed study. In science, this is the gold standard of publications. This was a double-blind study. Neither the subject being tested nor the doctor assessing the results knew when the phone was radiating and when it was off. This was a sham controlled study, which means that in addition to a real exposure, there was also a sham exposure with identical conditions but no radiation. This research was peer-reviewed, which means that experts in the field reviewed the manuscript looking for errors or flaws, bias, and conflict of interest. Each subject wore a chest electrode with transmitter against the skin. A receiver attached to clothing near the heart was connected by cable to the computer. In the original exposure protocol, the base of the cordless phone was about three feet away from the heart, and the radiation at the receiver was approximately two microwatts per centimeter squared. Here are the results for one of the subjects who was highly reactive to the radiation from the cordless phone. The heart rate of this person was 68 beats per minute during sham exposure. Each blue line in this graph represents the time between heartbeats known as the RR interval. The heart rate jumped to 122 beats per minute during the real exposure. This pattern was repeated. This person experienced an elevated heart rate and an altered pattern for the RR interval when exposed to radiation from the cordless phone. She also experienced upregulation of the sympathetic nervous system, which is a stress response, and downregulation of the parasympathetic nervous system, as well as an altered ratio of low to high frequency. Are the results in this experiment real, or are they an artifact due to electromagnetic interference? In other words, was the radiation from the cordless phone interfering with the receiver and giving a false reading, or was it interfering with the heart? We designed a test for interference. Interference increases as the radiation becomes stronger, and one way to make it stronger is to move the transmitter closer to the receiver. So we move the base of the cordless phone closer to the heart. Radiation at the receiver was much higher than in the original study, but still less than federal guidelines. Here is the response of a 59-year-old female who did not previously react to the radiation. With sham exposure at the head, her pulse was 60 beats per minute. Sham exposure at the heart, real exposure at the heart, real exposure at the head. There was no change in heart rate, and no change in the RR interval. No change in the sympathetic nervous system with exposure. A slight change in the parasympathetic nervous system. And no change in the ratio of low to high frequencies. The closer a transmitter is to the receiver, the greater the potential for interference. The distance between the receiver and the transmitter in this experiment was 5 centimeters, 
and radiation at the receiver was much higher than in the original study. There was no response which demonstrates that there was no interference and leads us to conclude that the results are real and are not an artifact. Just as radio frequency radiation can interfere with electromagnetic devices, it can also interfere with bioelectromagnetic organs like the heart. Both are examples of electromagnetic interference. In this study, the radiation was affecting the heart and not the equipment. For more information, watch the YouTube video describing this research, read about the effects of microwave radiation on the heart, and download a free copy of our research publication. Listen to cardiologist Dr. Stephen Sinatra, who states that people with undiagnosed heart problems, including Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome and supraventricular tachycardia, may be particularly vulnerable to radiofrequency microwave radiation.